And welcome inside the coach's room. Taking or defending is about everybody. But, but how you have everyone involved, I think, is the magic. And the competition is so deep. Start by building relationships. My job to bring yeah. coffee for Vita. <laughs> <laughs> well, you started with the importance of the coffee machine, so that's, that's okay. exactly Okay, Robert, ready? Yes, ready. <laughs> Did you ever do a podcast before? Yes. Um, only once or no, twice, I think. Rode Lantaren. <laughs> no? <laughs> I did not do that one. <laughs> okay, well, let's roll then. Mm -hmm. um, normally, we are more in a football context, but now we are in a hotel, just for everybody that's listening. Um, it doesn't really matter. And normally, we have football coaches, but now we have a strength and conditioning coaches that knows how to play badminton, tennis, does most of his job in cycling. So we have a completely different context, but uh, welcome, Robert. Thank you very much. Great to have you in your... I, do you have a busy schedule in, in these times? Yes, the schedule is uh, really busy. Um, a lot of races going on in, in, in top cycling at this moment. Yeah. Um, so it's a big challenge to um, find the balance between for the athletes between their training and their races yeah. and for the coaches to have logistically uh, everything all right because we we work all over europe yeah of course um just to be clear you are the head of development at mm -hmm. jumbo visma yes while i was preparing i saw some article that okay jumbo visma is right there in the top three big uh teams also with the big budget so that yeah. says something about the level i think that you work on yeah, Jumbo Visma is at this moment one of the leading teams in professional cycling. Yeah. Um, I think even at this point, as we speak, we are leading the world ranking. Okay. But that, that is changing, let's say, every week because sure. race, races collect points sure. by riders and then they make a new calculation. Yeah. At this moment, we are leading the, the cycling world, actually, okay. in top sports. And it's a big organization. Um we have three cycling teams, uh, the Jumbo Visma World Tour team, that's the highest level with riders like uh, Primoz Roglic, Jonas Wingegaard, Wout van Aert. We have a development squad, yeah. so that is really meant to be um, create a performance level where young riders can enter. We select them, we scout them, we train them, we, we try to guide them, help them to guide them yeah. into professional ranks. It's uh, very comparable with academies in football, okay. where you do the same. Um, and we have a women's team, also a world tour team, with uh, with some uh, some big names like Marianne Vos. Yeah. And next to that, there is a big skating um, of course. area in in our world team. famous in the Netherlands. The world famous in the Netherlands. So we have well, let's call it um, uh, the top team is is the team that performs on the World Cups and uh, where the riders perform in, in world championships, yep. uh, European championships and, and Olympics. Then we have a development squad also there, and we have a mar marathon team at Jumbo Visma. To be clear, I'm not involved in skating at all, okay. uh, so I'm really responsible in the, in the cycling part. Okay. And how does the <coughs> uh, head of development connect to those teams? What, your first idea, okay, you're mainly involved in the development team, but that could be an assumption. Well, how does your role relate to those teams and well, maybe your daily daily work? Uh, mainly involved in the practice of the development team, um, but very important to look at the long term. And uh, that's the reason why we have a sh very short connection to the World Tour team with my, let's say, the head of... Head of the head, the director of the team, yeah. Marijn Zemel. Yeah. So there's a very strong connection between the two of us in, in, in creating the new vision of the team. Where are we in 2025? Where are we in 2026? Which what what do players need to have in, in five years to perform at top level? Is that the question that you ask yourself then? Or the both of you? Uh, exactly, exactly. So you always try to look forward and to see where this particular sport is 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 developing to what will be the evaluation of the athlete different types of athletes so you try to create a situation where you know 
uh, which KPIs will be leading in the future. And that means that you have to find your talents who can answer these questions. And that's a challenge, but it's a fantastic challenge. Um, and it's it, it's never an ending story, and it's no. never and, and never a dull moment. I would say. No, <laughs> no, of course. I can imagine that you have some ideas, and time. Well, uh, the practical situation goes much faster, so your talents need to be ready on some elements much earlier. Some things go slower, whatever. That's a c- constant balance in developing. I think. Yeah, what you see is that the performance age is going down, okay. decreases. Uh, I think you see this in many sports. Yeah. And I think <coughs> part of that is that the education and the development programs and the structure in, in different sports is kind of pushed down into the academies. So on a younger age, athletes uh, will be supported much more professional than we did 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago, which means that the ve- talent development goes faster. And that results in the fact that younger athletes uh, can perform on, on, on world top level already when they are probably 19, 20, 21, 22 years old. Yeah. We have seen this. Uh, there are some exceptions. Uh, let look at gymnastics, for example. But in, in, in I think in, in many sports, you see this kind of decreasing age yeah. where where players or athletes are already on top level. The question is how long will they survive? Yeah. And are there still athletes uh, on an on an, a little bit an older age who are a little bit more late mature, who are a little bit more slow in their development? Do they still reach also this top level? And I think the answer at this moment for sure is still yes. Yeah, because you hear if in that related to that you heard two let's say visions or or streams of thoughts that they say, okay, we are over pushing young talents. We're treating them like young adults already on, on an early age. So they are relatively s- soon burned out. Um, should we give them more freedom and accept then that they mature a little bit later? Um, that's a hard question. It depends it on the person, it of course. D- but it depends on the person. It depends on the... Um, on the type of sports, I think um, there are many many factors that play a role in this yeah. in this question. Um, we also pay more attention to different aspects of sports. So uh, when you when you go back in in history and you look ten years ago, nutrition was on a completely different level na- uh, then than, yeah. than it is now. Um, personal development is one of our key points in our strategy to develop talent is on a much different level now than it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago training wise so knowledge about training knowledge about uh, the introduction of scientific knowledge into sports is has has has, has given an enormous increase of of, of, of pushing the levels up uh, so all these things have have a connection together, um, and of course you need a structure, an environment, where all these items or, or streams come together. Do we overpower people? Do we over overreach people? That's always possible. That was always possible, also in the past. I don't think so. Okay, I think that while while you were playing i was thinking about this you have let's say elite elite talents <coughs> that work in a top professional environment for example like yours uh, and we before we started recording we were discussing okay you have top top talents you have talents and then you have a large group below um and when maybe over overstructuring people's life of kids lives is mainly in the group below in let's say semi-professional groups kids maybe think that they can make it. Well, the example that I was thinking is a 14-year-old boy who is a son of a friend of mine who was in a, a, a trip towards a match. He's 14 years old. We're not talking about Ajax level. We're talking about top amateur level, pretty decent level. And the kid took out some candy and one of the other kids said, 
this is not what you should do. We have a match. And then you could say, okay, we have, are we pushing 14 year olds in that large group in way too much structure? Or shouldn't we, shouldn't we just let them be 14 year olds, even though maybe, even on maybe higher levels, just to learn how life is. Do you, do you kind of get what I'm saying? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I think the big question always is when do you start selecting and when do you start yeah. when do you start recognizing talent, and uh, is it is it normal that we think that we can see on an eight year old boy that he's going to be a top football player or a top tennis player? I don't think so. So you see a lot of a couple of countries like, for example, Norway are extremely successful in top sports compared to the amount of people that they have in the country. And what you see there is a very fundamental development of young young kids in sports up to the age of, let's say, 15, 16, before they start, we call it, specialize in a certain sport. I think that is the connection to what you ask and what you what you mean. So if you are pushing children already when they are eight years old or ten years old, or you I know, name the example of fourteen years old, you can't eat candy. That's pretty strange, in in my opinion. You can make them aware of it, but in the end, it's their opinion and it's their way of life that they should work for. Yeah. If they see in a certain way, oh, I have to do this better, uh, instead of that. Other people are telling them all the time what is better. Um, you come to a situation where the where the where the athlete can develop. But it's the the big thing is when do you start, and what do you look for. And the candy problem or the candy idea is not the big problem. It's just okay. Is a fourteen year old does this way of thinking fit into his his life at that moment and does it really matter if he's going to perform or not yeah and is the coach aware of that and is the coach aware of it so that means every individual needs a, has a different exact guideline yeah. so is the coach available of that ha, does he have this guideline available and is he prepared to work on it yeah yeah and does the, no, the coach know how to deal with but and does he doesn't overvalue or undervalue the situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that is a very important um, overvaluing talent. Yeah, uh, and the importance of 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 performing, because I'm not trying to downgrade top sport, <coughs> because in it, especially on a certain level and still a certain age, in my opinion, should be mainly for the love of the sports, uh, because if you look at Look at it from a longer perspective. Yeah, you don't want to burn out your kid in a sport and that they never enjoy it anymore. It can be very black and white here, but, um, no, but the enjoyment and the passion you have for your sport is way more important than than, for example, I think we go in this direction of <coughs> are we developing or are we focusing on winning? Yeah, yeah, sure. And the winning part that's in young ages, in my opinion, is not the way to develop talent. It's much more about the road we go and the road makes the in the end makes the effort yeah. and makes the makes the performance possible. And it's not like we have to win at eight years old, we have to win at ten years old, we have to win at twelve years old. If the focus is there and the focus is there too much, you create a situation where um, people are very stubborn in their way of thinking. And they will not be able to look at a process on a longer time and will not understand what they need in future perspectives. Um, I think that that's that's a big issue in talent development. Okay. Yeah. I've wrote, written one thing down, which connects to that as well, um, which was your main question, maybe in general, um, before we started. I'm not going to go into your office anymore. We're already pa way past that. <laughs> but um, uh, and that is, what is talent? So and so, and what are we looking for? Is always comes from from those second steps, I think. But you've worked at football clubs. You worked in different kinds of sports. And now you are in cycling. I don't know if this is the end of your journey, but 
uh, this is the context that you are now. Um, wh- what is, in your opinion, talent? Um, <clears throat> talent is an kind of an abused wor- word. Okay. So when somebody performs on a certain level, if, if it's playing uh, the violin or the piano or doing ballet or football or tennis, it's very soon that people address somebody like, oh, this is a talent. He's, oh, he's so talented. And, and then my question always is, in what? And yes, he can play football or he can pass people or he can shoot or he can head or he can tackle. But what is the real reason why one person at a certain age is quite similar to the other person and one of them is getting to be a top player in the Dutch national team and one of them sticks to the amateurs and kind of flows away and finds another area to be talented. So in a certain way, you could say talent is overrated. And there is a lot, there are some specific things that you probably need as a human being to be really top, top, top in whatever area. Uh And this has a lot to do with um, something that was born and came to you when you came to uh, to the world, yeah. Um, so genetic problem, genetic issues are are really involved in how good you are at things. But there is something else that's the mind that works together with this body. So you can have a lot of talent in the physical perspective, but what does the mind with this physical yeah. perspective? In what situation are you? Are you focusing from a young age on only winning, or are you focusing on on different things? get passionate about your sports and being aware that you need to work very, very hard to reach these high levels. Yeah. Um, you have to overcome things. So resilience is yeah. extremely important. The rocky road is mentioned a lot. The 10,000 hours of training is mentioned a lot. So I hope to give... The, the, the answer that I give is very open and is very wide but all these things that I mentioned, I think, are important for um, to be aware of as a coach that will be highly influencing the success of young sportsmen. Yeah. You are connecting it to, let's say, a future performance or a potential performance, um, if, I, if I'm hearing it correctly. And at the same time, you're saying, if people look at a player and he, and they're saying... Oh, he's very talented. I'm also hearing they are kind of trying to say something about his current performance. He's probably just better than the rest. And that probably has a reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, so okay, he's talented. Why? Because he's the best of his group. Or he's very good because, uh, despite his short length. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it says something about his current level yeah. and all the factors that you're stating. Probably going to push him towards some potential level that he has. Um, so th- th- w- I was thinking does talent even exist or do you just have potential aspects and do you have a current level and if you kind of put it in an equation you get a potential level Every every everybody has a talent everybody sure. has the potential to develop this talent the question is what is the talent and yeah. uh, how can you de- develop it best and where are the, the weaker points and where are the very strong points and can you get them connected and push yourself up to high levels through training or to um, other types of, of working on your own, yeah. on yourself, to create your your maximum potential. And yes, if you see, if you look at um, football players that are uh, 13, 14 years old, and we look at a match, we will be able to see. Okay, this is probably the best player, and in the, on this pitch, and this is probably not the best player yeah. on this pitch. There's always a history on how did this talent or did this player get to this level? Was that due to a lot of training already in a very young age? Yeah. Or was this because of another reason? Yeah. And why is this other player a little bit less outstanding at this moment? And what can we do about it? So yes, if you look at young people, they excel 
at a certain moment. The, the question is always, do they still excel? Do they have the qualities to excel over 10 years? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the big issue with talent recognition and talent development. So where is there? There will be an underline, and you will be gifted from from being born. Sure. I mean, sure. I mean, you can you can if you don't have um, um, type one uh, muscle fibers, you're never going to get fast. No. Yeah. And if you have a lot of type two, you you never run a marathon yeah, within sure. two hours. So that's 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 quite. Yeah. And if you weigh a uh, hundred kilos, you can probably be a sumo wrestler, but you will not be a top cyclist no. uh, uh, finishing top in Abdu S or something. Yeah. So there are some markers that you can that you can mention. Um, like I said, the question will be, um, how can you kind of see the potential of somebody and how can you stretch this potential? Yeah. And that, that comes a lot to the environment where you are. Uh, the 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 reflection that you pay on yourself, the personality that you have, and the environment that helps you um, pushing this potential forward. Yeah, I think that is that is the hard thing. And if I make it more in a concrete situation, because you've you've looked at this both in football and in cycling, um, what are what are the, the, um, the aspects that you have in both sports in talent development? Let's 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 still talk about let's say young ados- uh, adolescent players, um, and what are the big differences between those two contexts? If you compare cycling and and football, it's way different types of athletes. Yeah, you see uh, physically com- phys- or phys- in total. No, no, physically, yeah, yeah. physically, completely sure. different athletes. Sure. So look, if you if you look at the top cyclists and you look at the top football players and you 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 look at their bodies, the way they have developed, completely different people. Yeah. I think in the my mi- superficial assumption is a, a cyclist is more of a skinny guy, and um, uh, you have more of an all round athlete. But this is all round athlete, different types of muscle fibers, oh yeah. uh, different types of muscle fibers in the amount yeah. that they have. Um, you have still ba- a very uh, big guy. Was I very rude to the cyclist now? No, 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 no <laughs> not, at, not at all, not at all, because you have big guys on the bike. I mean, uh, top riders like Wout van Aert, Christophe Laporte, uh, they are they are uh, between 75 and 80 kilos. This, yeah. that's, this is really strong yeah, strong yeah. guys. If you see them, they are they are big. They yeah. are, but with a, with still a completely different composition than Cristiano Ronaldo sure. or. Or 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 any other top football players yeah. or any other top tennis players, and in youth it's also already visible. It's in youth it's it's visible, um, uh, yes. But but if you want to um, excel from your physical perspective, you have to wait a little bit longer, and because football is a is a very skill uh, directed sport, yeah, uh, technique. Speed, quickness, um, being aware of what is around you—that that that happens in a completely different perspective than on a bike. So on the bike, I think the physical perspective is more deciding than on the sure. football pitch. Sure, less variables. No. Yeah, so dominant factor. Yeah, it's it's, it's less variability. Uh, or you probably could say a different variability because I don't know if you ever ever seen these videos from riders in a peloton or in a mass bunch sprint or yeah sure um, there are a lot of variability yeah true 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 <laughs> and it goes really fast so you have to act really fast true. and that's comparable to the decision making that football players have to do so if we come to decision making for example that's a very big and very important KPI in football. Yeah. So, for example, when you're in the <coughs> peloton, okay, shifting four or five centimeters to the left, when it becomes a little bit more crowded, when do I put my head down? When do I put it up? Those small details are constant decisions. Yeah, that wh- yeah. Where are my opponents? Where's yeah, the sure. wind? Uh, do we have to shift? Yes or no? Do we have to attack? Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Even that's our even larger perspectives. Yeah. yeah, yeah more yeah, strategic yeah. decisions. Yeah. Sure. 
Yeah, so that 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 comes really to seconds, split sure. seconds to decide, and that's comparable to what a football player has to do: do yeah. I shoot or do I pass? Because if you're two seconds too late and you're up in done. a steep percentage, you're never going to get there oh, anymore. You're done. Yeah. Okay. Clear. Yeah. And especially we call it in the peloton, it's called the washing machine. Okay. Because you're constantly turning around okay. from front to back, from front to back, ah, and you okay. have to save your position all the time. And that's 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 really a learning point for young riders to. Uh, Know to be when in front on the yeah, washing and machine and then when keep your position. Yeah, sure. And that's that's uh, that has a lot to do with reading, and 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 with uh, visual information that you have to connect or collect before you can make a decision. And this is exactly what happens in football. Yeah. There are so many, uh, there's so, so such a, an amount of information that you get from your opponents, from your the players who you are with, ball speed. Uh, etc. That 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 these are the <coughs> most demanding moments in in in, in football, and, and they really decide if you are going to be successful or yeah. not. So the physical side, yes, big difference on the on the on the deciding side, information collecting and acting. There are very much similarities, in yeah. my opinion. And the similarity in the end is, are you passionate enough to be with this ball and your team, to be on this bike and your team on a daily base? Yeah. Uh, are you aware of there will be some rocks on the road that you have to pass? Injuries, uh, not being selected, um, lack of self-confidence, uh, et cetera, et cetera. How do you get over these, these, these points of, um, of setbacks? Now it's yeah. yeah these these setbacks, and um, do you cre- can you create a certain kind of resilience to overcome? And I think that is in in all sports you will be con- confronted with these aspects. Yeah. And and then probably we talk about personality, we talk about mental strength, we pop talk about mindful, uh, certain kind of mindset. Yeah, yeah. That that I think many top sportsmen, men and women, uh, separate themselves from more average people. Yeah, I think not even in sports everywhere of yeah course. in business life also yeah, and yeah. in music in everywhere but it's a clear trait that you have whether to overcome the things that are in your in your way towards your goal or towards your pleasure or fun or whatever your passion maybe that's the best word mm-hmm. um and well it's not even a question but there will be a strong correlation to anybody anywhere working on elite level or performing at his or her top that they have the strength to overcome whatever rocks are on the road, probably. Yeah, it, it's it's never going. If you if you want to be an athlete and you want to to reach top level, let's say in an easy way, f- just simply forget about it. Yeah. It is going to be hard. Yeah. It's going to be harsh, and it's going to be even more than hard. There's no question. Yeah. And and. I think for a marathon runner or for a cyclist or a cross-country skier, this is a little bit in a different perspective than for a football player or a handball player or a basketball player. But there are many similarities in these careers that go by this subject. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. I'm thinking about so many factors that you are a talented player and you didn't have that resistance because you were always the best. And you, you, they come up with a different kind of struggle when they're 15, 16, 17. And they had kind of have a disadvantage to the players that didn't have it, that didn't have it then. They, have, they already have the <coughs> advantage of overcome. And then you see, I think you still see players who then have to tap into that strength and do realize that they have it. Some of them don't. I, it's pretty much everywhere. Um, and probably in cycling, it's probably the same. You can be physically the best. <laughs> throughout till you're 16 and then realize okay now I've, I'm up against the big boys and different changes or yeah and this this resilience is I I, I often use in my uh, teams the words no excuses and that comes back to 
are you being in in your surrounding in your in your in your family or in your club or in your team are we pointing to ourselves when we need yeah. to improve or are we pointing to an external variable that makes us not perform so the weather was not good the tires were bad extreme ownership yeah the the ball the ball that we play with was too soft uh it was raining yeah um the coach didn't see me uh so there are many different types of um external excuses to find yeah. and that that habit and that generations that we have to deal with now with young people they have this kind of habit because they are protected in their in their environment and people tell them a lot oh you're so good you're so talented y you are going to reach top but they forget about what is needed to reach this really top and to overcome problems and to overcome um like I said before, the rocks on the road that you have to pass to 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 fight for yourself and yeah. to fight for I really want this. And how can we as as coaches guide this? Because it's gonna be there anyway, and we are on the sidelines or we are in that context. Well, first a coach should be aware of this that that, that this exists. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's one point. Then the second one is the coach is the coach acting like this or not? So is the coach also using a lot of excuses why yeah, his yeah. team is not performing? And then it starts with the knowledge about how can we make our athletes aware that this is a big problem to overcome. And that this is a big problem to solve. We call it ownership, ownership of your process. So we learn them to deal with feedback. We learn them to give them feedback. We learn them to reflect themselves. We learn them to set goals. We learn them to evaluate if they have reached their goals. Why, wh why you did, why you didn't. I think these aspects are crucial in in coach relationships to their athletes and in um, team performance areas. So if you look at the All Blacks as an example, if you look at uh, how we try to do this in Jumbo Visma, yeah. if you look at the big sports teams, there was a very interesting Netflix series about Phil Jackson and the yeah. Chicago Bulls. It, it in the end comes to this. How do you overcome problems? as an individual and how do you overcome problems as a team and if these are connected and the coach is aware of it then you get to extreme performances yeah so um what i'm thinking is that so you have a way to you have to a way to tap into your resilience for yourself because whatever happens uh, you have an injury or it's not working or you're out of form, whatever kind of subjective thing you can connect to your problems, let's call it like that. And is are you saying that it has your solution has to fit identity and culture of the group? Uh, yes, but you also, of course, create culture. Yeah. And and, and with this culture, you create, create a certain line, kind of bottom line. Yeah, sure. This is how we work. This is how we do things. And as long as you can fit into this level, you, you're with you're with them. Okay. As soon as you drop out, you're out. Yeah, you mean a performance level or yeah, performance or level. But also motivation level or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. So if it, there there is a bottom line in all these aspects in training, in nutrition, in per personal development, in 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 in, um, in tactics. Yeah. If if you're below that level, you drop out anyway, yeah. and that's probably what we call you have the talent or you don't have sure. it. But that when you're at that point, there comes a new way, there comes a new um, challenge, and then you have to fight yourself into this challenge, and to to reach out for your highest possible potential. Yeah, and the culture, uh, maybe I don't know how you see this, but you have your bench or the team benchmark or the and it can be it can be any factor 
And then if you as soon as you made that benchmark, above that benchmark is also probably freedom to to be yourself and to show your own qualities and because then the whole of those individuals becomes a team again. Yeah, but it's not like um there should always be the freedom to make decisions sure on your own for yourself what is the best for me in the end it has to fit in does 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 this decision um help the team effort uh, and what is the decisions that we make in this culture as a culture or as a team uh Freedom is very important, but I, I mean with freedom, I mean freedom of thinking and freedom of collecting ideas and freedom of telling your ideas and telling your feelings and telling giving feedback. And if you're free to do this, you are, and the coach is aware of it, there will be some lines in which you will have to perform. That's simple. That's the rules yeah. of the game or that can be the rules <coughs> of the coach or that can be rules of the environment. But in this... We call it, let's call it bend, bandwidth yeah. or something. You can move left, right, forward, yeah. backwards, whatever. And then it comes to your personal. Um, then it comes to your personal development to be aware of it, and to make steps to improve yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I I think I understand what you're saying. And I'm really th- I'm. Well, it's a very uh, current example, but I'm, I'm thinking about. Uh, Noah Lang, who's now a top talent in the Netherlands, and you can think whatever he thinks, but he, Van Gaal is pushing him into the culture of the Dutch team, and you feel that he is kind of, okay, where is my benchmark, what can I do? Uh, literally in an, in an interview yesterday, you see that it, there's a benchmark in discipline, and there's a benchmark in freedom, and they're both trying to find in whatever way they can they can perform the best together. That's a very interesting structure. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a great example. Uh, so there's a coach who sets a certain kind of baseline. This is my baseline. It's a high baseline. And you can fit or you can't. Yeah. And as soon as you fit, or you decide yourself as an athlete, I want to fit, then you behave and you 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 train and you on a certain level and on a certain way. And if you're there, I think there's a certain kind of freedom again. Yeah. Yeah, And the interesting thing is we as coaches, well, if you have parents, you know, if you have kids, you know, it doesn't work like that. But okay, we think we set that boundary or we set that benchmark and then you have to accept it and then you follow. And uh, it doesn't work like that at all. Not even at top, top level because there is an own identity and there's things that players thing they want to do or that they want to do and th- th- you're always looking for okay I'm going to push the rules or I'm going to bend the rules or I'm going to follow the rules it's an interesting process yeah hopefully uh, when athletes try to bend the rules or try to s- to change the rules or whatever um, it, sh- it, sh- it sh- should not be to kind of camouflage their their weaker points oh, yeah. and that's what, what's done a lot so um, if you're able to stretch yourself and to see, oh, way, oh, wow, um, if I really want to reach this top level, I have to change my behavior. And the example that you give is extremely good. Um, but you see this also in, in, in everywhere. You see this in cycling, you see this in tennis, I've seen this in, in many sports. So if you're able to change that mindset of yourself, like, okay, wait. Why is this guy so successful and why am I not? Do I have the same potential? If I have, I probably have to change my habits. If I don't, that's also possible, of course. Then it will be hard anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Um, a little bit of an agenda here. You have three books. And yeah. uh, we want to take time for this. <coughs> uh, it's not a fluent switch. This to a different subject, but I don't care. Um, and we already uh, discussed uh, the three of them before we started. But um, you were also eager on 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 sharing this with us. 
Um, so can you tell me which three books you brought? There's a certain order that we discussed, but yeah, let's just go with the books. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I've been looking the last. Oh, by the way, are you a reader? Do you find time to read? Uh, yeah, I try. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, as I'm in 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 sports in top sports already for about let's say 25 years. Yeah. I always ask myself, okay, talent. What is talent? Um, so I started to read a lot about it in different perspectives, also in business life and in sports yeah. and in yeah, because there are there are many organizations that develop talent. Uh, a university is developing talent. Sure. So I came to, I brought this book, it's called The Sports Gene, it's written by David Epstein, and he goes back to, okay, where does, is, is, is top sport just a genetic factor, or is there something else? And then you get to this physical point, sure. of view, these hotbeds in the world, where you have the Kenyan, uh, Kenyan runners, yeah, you have tennis players in Russia, you have ice hockey players in Canada. We it's go through it very fast, but it, because of your surroundings and your genetics, yeah. you have a certain type of character characteristics, probably physically, yeah. that have more... Yeah, but then it starts. Because when you have the, the characteristics, the physical characteristics, yeah. you will find a couple of hundred other people in the world who sure, have it sure. on this specific talent area. And then it really starts. And then he comes to the saying, okay, then what happens then? And then it comes to resilience, training, blah, blah, blah. Then you have this this book, it's called The Talent Lab. It's written by Owen Slot. I, I think I really like this because it shows that um, when UK Sports decided, okay, we want medals in London 2012 yeah. and afterwards in Rio, uh, how are we going to get um, talent into our programs? So what they did is they set up a very big testing um, program. Yeah, They literally got people from the street. <laughs> they tested him and said, okay, you're going to be a rower yeah. or you're going to do boxing yeah. or you're going to do uh, shooting or yeah. whatever. And you can't say anything that anything else than it worked out. They made it because they collected a huge amount of money. Yeah. And a lot of these sportsmen didn't start at seven years old. Okay. Or didn't start at eight years old with their sports. There are, uh, of course, exception, exemptions. But a lot of them were probably... They even started when even they were tested. 20s. They started when they were tested. Okay. So just to be clear, uh, 2000, what, uh, what, when, when did it start? Yeah, I think uh, about 10 years before the games. Yeah. So, so I think 2002, 2003, uh, some something, the, something uh, the UK there. decided, okay, we need... We are going to do this differently. Yeah, we need um, we need medals because yeah. we took uh, the London Olympics to to London. Now we want to win something, and how can we do this in the most pragmatic way? That's kind of yeah, what yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. So so the UK decided we want to be a big player in Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> how are we going to do this? Yeah. And we have many sports there. So how are we going to bring young young people or talented people in our different programs? And then I have this one. Uh, this is just one of them. This is called The Habit of Excellence. And it's uh, it's written by a, a lieutenant c- colonel um, from the Bit- British Army. But you can you can find a lot of books about this or, or podcasts or whatever. Yeah, sure. This is about special forces. And I think one of the most successful talent development squads, if you can talk about yeah. it like this, in the world, is special forces. Um, because... In a certain way, people come into this system, they are selected, and they are trained, and they become top professionals in their professions. So SEALs or, or Navy SEALs yeah, or sure. uh, Marines or whatever. And this, um, in the Army way, it's a lot about the structure that they use and the thoughts behind uh, the mission. So how do we create a team? How do we create the best individuals to work in this team? Because it's about life and death. It's very simple. If we are a team It's together, not about three points. It's no, about it's not about matters. three points. Or it's not about scoring a goal or whatever. No, it's about life and death. So if you make a mistake there, you kill your teammate. And if you do good, you both survive. Yeah. You, you don't get a prize. You no, get you to live. No, no <laughs> you complete the mission. Yeah. 
And that's extreme. That's an extremely interesting, in my opinion, that's an extremely ex- uh, interesting way to look at teams and to way do a way to look at tasks that you want to fulfill. And there, it pops up that you're very dependent on each other. No matter what rank you have, no matter what qualities you have, well, they have a very high basic quality. Sure. But still, they are different people. Uh, it's, it's all different individuals. Yeah. But they are so good in making you a feel a team member and act as a team member and feeling this responsibility for your team members that in whatever situation, they always act on what is my task. I have to be reliable and I have to take care of my team. And and that you can you can jump over to the other two sports and you can use these thoughts, <coughs> uh, kind of the KPIs that they have yeah. in your in in performance and in how do you deal with uh, resilience and how do you deal with with sportsmanship and how do you deal with being a team member. Okay, clear. In the the order that you uh, because I want to end with the uh, with the army one again, but. In the order that you that you talk over the talk about these books, it starts with, let's say, where and uh, where is talent and how can we find them and what are their traits. Then put them in the right sport to make it very simple. Okay, I'm very I'm summarizing this in one, and then how you deal with them is that mm-hmm. also the order that we should approach sports in your opinion. I think. Uh, <coughs> when kids are young, please let them do what they like to do. Sure. Uh, let let try to let them do a lot, so they can have experiences. And then somewhere on this road, they will hopefully decide. Oh, this is really what I like. Yeah. And after that, the idea of performance should pop up, not the other way around. In in my opinion. Yeah. The only funny thing in this one is when do you? This select one is the the army. Bo- yeah, the, the army. The, the, habit of the, funny, the funny part of this is, um, when do you go into army? When you decide to become a marine, that's not when you're eight no. or ten. That is, let's say, around twenty. So you're a lot more mature, and they 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 show us that they can select in a couple of months. And, and a year later, or two years later, or three years later, you are a highly qualified soldier. Yeah. So they are not thinking about an eight-year-old. No, or no, no. So they, they are selecting on different, on a different way. Yeah. And, and most of it is a, a, let's call it a mental way. Yeah. And I think, w- like we were saying before, if you would... Pick the hundred Marines that sign up for, let's say, the the seals tri- seals uh, project mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. The thirty ones that will make it probably weren't the ones that you were going to pick when you lined them up all hundred. Uh, I think so. That's what I hear from the people yeah. who are working with these young men and women. And so it, it, but the, the the thing I was going is there a, because in football, maybe in cycling as well. Mm-hmm. You hear, yeah, it's not always the best players, it's the best team that wins. That They were saying that about Real Madrid. You could you could mention or discuss if they had the best team. Uh, or sorry, if they had the best players. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, is that also something that that the army then creates? I don't know anything about the army, but it's just a feeling that I have, that they create such a unity that knows how to perform and such is so connected in everything that they outperform the rest. Um, I think what you say is right. They create certain kind of unity on an extremely high level. Yeah. But of course, you have you you are dealing with also highly individually qualified people. Sure. So I think there's there's a combination. Sure. But if you're very also in the army, if you're very team oriented, but you can't do it individually, you're 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 dropping out. Still, there's and a ben- the there's a, there's the benchmark. Th- there's again. the benchmark yeah, yeah, again. There's yeah. the there's the bottom line again. Yeah. And, but but these standards are very high in both. So what I hear from the people 
that I interview that that you can have very highly qualified individuals, but if they can't work in the team on this very high level, yeah. they're out. Yeah. And if they can work in the team extremely well, but individually they can't reach the standard, they're out. Yeah, true. So, but the most interesting thing in this for me is there are a lot of people in the world that think they can see on a seven-year-old boy that he's going to be the new Lionel Messi. That's very interesting. Yeah. Then you go to the army. We never go to a, a, a public school and say, hey, this kid. You should be in the you army. You should be in the army. <laughs> yeah, you, can, you know how to hold a yeah. gun. Or, yeah. hey, you're seven, <laughs> hey, you should be on a bike. Yeah. Or, hey, that's, that's very strange. And that's a very strange thing that we see in, in football, we see it in other sports. Yeah. And then you come to the, the saying that, that, that one of these writers comes up with is talent is overrated. So there, there is a, there is a, a moment in, in, in your career, let's say between 15 and 20, that this, this sets. And everything, in my opinion, what you do before should be focused on energy, fun, uh, you can work hard. Sure, there's nothing wrong with working hard. Yeah, but if you start to do okay, select and prioritize high performance. The question is, should you do that before a certain age? And and there I I always pop up with this idea of when do you become a soldier? Everybody places being a soldier once in their life when they are young kids and. <laughs> So there's no scouts running no, around. You should no be. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you, you're yeah. a good cover up. You're good hiding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Does it contradict the the way that we started? That okay, they are uh, able to select the best ones relatively late in a short time, but at the same time in top sports we see the age going down. So you need to be there earlier. The kids know already know much more, and if we wait too long, we kind of yeah. Uh, well, we Nor Norway, for example, cuts that idea. And I think also in American top sports, you start relatively late because it's another system. It's a school system. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, our, our way of, of doing top sports is, is different. It's a different structure. But I think we are overdoing in uh, scouting and selecting talent on a way too young age. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in football, you see this opinion coming up again that a lot of clubs... Cancelling their, let's say, U9s, U10s, U11s, uh, U11s maybe, I don't know, but these very young ages because they are aware that they're only selecting. They're selecting the best players of that age at that <laughs> moment and they... Yeah, well, in football and also in other skill sports, I call football mostly yeah, sure. skills, but you have to start early. That's, that's no doubt. Um, when you start selecting early, you have a lot of dropouts. Yeah. The question is, don't you push away too many talented boys or girls that could reach a high potential if you do it a little, little bit different. Um, one other thing is, uh, look at, look at, we are in Egmond in Holland that's close to Amsterdam and it's close to Alkmaar. If AZ spots a young talent and Ajax does the same, it's more like the battle between the clubs. Yeah. Then the overview, is this going to be a talent? Yeah. 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 So there are a lot of organizations that have a, a U10 or a U9 or a U8 because mm. the others have it also. Sure. And otherwise the player goes there. In in the big picture, the question is, do we develop the talent the best way? Yeah. Yeah. So there you have sports interests and club interests that kind of contradict. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think that is the... What you just said, that, that contradiction is, is, is very big and is playing a big role in, uh, in talent development. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And it's still, <coughs> even for clubs that, well, this is my assumption or my idea that club, okay, we're going we're gonna to stop with this very early selection but they still keep let's say their fingers in the top amateur clubs trying to influence the process there so the pathway is still logical to them uh you see it everywhere so 
it 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 should be the only thing the only way it can work is everybody shares the idea okay we have to give a little bit more freedom in the bottom and start selecting later and, and realize that these are kids let them be let them be kids let them be in their whatever let them just find the love for the game instead of taking them already and over pushing them yeah yeah probably that is the, yeah that's exactly the way i would like to talk yeah. about it's more like a fear to miss people yeah 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 and that uh, it all comes from okay the fear that there's not enough talent talent will always be there sure and um you can look at it in different perspectives and if you if you want to select them very early the chance of having the wrong guys is very big yeah. and if you if you if you dare to start selecting a bit later the chances to are to be successful will increase Okay. And of course, there are in different sports, there are different balls. I mean, you're not going to be a gymnastic when you start at 16 years of, of age. Of course. And you're not going to be a football, a very good, talented football player when you start at the age of 20. That's ridiculous. True. That's not what I'm saying. So every sport has different, and it depends on the physical qualities or the physical capacities that you need. Cross country skiing, where you have big, you need big lungs and an extreme amount of endurance and cycling the same and marathon running the same you can you have to develop this over years and you but you don't have to start at 8 no. you can start at 16 yeah that's no problem because then you have 10 years till you're 26 yeah and you can do a lot of training yeah this interesting discussion because i'm well i saying okay that's very clear because you can be a top athlete when you're 26 but at the same time, in a lot of sports, we have the feeling that they already have to be top at 21 or they have to be that top talent at 19 which is in football is also really the case. We want to push them earlier and earlier, and we want and well, if I'm talking about the Netherlands, we are this uh, country that really shares uh, what that really is into talent. We give talents a lot of chances, but it only counts when they're 17 because look, that's what we provide. But we c- if we just move up the bar to 21. But it's our idea that a talent should be 17. Uh, it's not an yeah, idea. Yeah, but it's also a little bit forced by the system and by the structure. Because if you look at the average age of Real Madrid winning the Champions League, or if you look at the average age of the opponent, uh, Liverpool, yeah, I don't know what the average age is, but it's definitely not 22. No, it's older. It's, it's higher. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and probably the average age of Liverpool at this moment or the average age of Real Madrid or the average age of Chelsea or the average age of Man City is over 25. Let's make this yeah, assumption. Yeah, sure. It's over 25. So, But the Dutch league is kind of a talent recruitment area for these clubs. Yeah, yeah. And that means that when you're 19, 20, or 21 years old, you actually want to be selected by the city. True. Or by. So you have to be kind of quick in the Dutch league. Although it's not the top, top, top level. It's, it's a very good level, but it's not the top, top, yeah. top level. So there is also a little bit a. Um, yeah, because we're all looking for that one. Yeah, but like but, like you but, said, you but, have but, these but, pyramids but, of yeah, top. Yeah, but also top. in Real Madrid or also in Manchester <coughs> City, you have these one or two very young top yeah, sure. uh, Voden or uh, whatever. Camavinga. Yeah, you have them. They bought them, but still. You have them in. <laughs> you have them in 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 cycling. You have yeah, them yeah. in. You have them in all different types of sport. But the main group is still the group that is a bit older yeah. and needs a bit more time. Yeah. True. Yeah. I completely agree, but uh, but we are, f- yeah. And, and then going back, maybe it's a little bit of a narrative that that we want to. We we are this education country, and we want to give the, these academy because we are the pathway to Real Madrid. Um, and there are a lot of stories where our player is in twenty two and and then becomes a proper Eredivisie player and then moves on when he's twenty five. There's no shame in that. No, uh, no. That's the perfect pathway, or not? Per- that's a pathway, and. But we are. If if he's not there at twenty two, you're not a talented no, anymore. No, but take the national Dutch football team as an example. What is the average age of the eleven players that will be playing the first game on the World Championships in Qatar in December? 
what will be the lineup and how old are they? These players come from the Dutch league. They are all selected somewhere. They're yeah. all trained somewhere. They are all out selected again and they went to Europe. Yeah. There's hardly any players that, that in this squad that is 20 playing for a Dutch team and making it into the first 11 in the national team. Yeah. They all had this path of, okay, doing the Dutch way, being selected, being trained, being developed, then make the step outside of the Dutch league and then come back to the national team. Yeah. That's, that's, I think it's, I don't know the numbers, but I think it's, it would be interesting to see. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about how the many story. Most of them are, 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 I don't know the facts, but... Most of them came into the national team when they were still in the Dutch team. So for Dumfries was already at PSV, Matthijs de Ligt was already there, Timber was already there. Yeah, but then you 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 they are in the in the big teams. In sure, Holland. sure, top so three, top three sure, teams. Sure, sure. And all the others came from another. They, they kind of come back, so yeah. they come back from Europe to the national team. Yeah, yeah. And and in these international leagues, they needed time to adapt. Sure, that's for sure. They needed time to adapt. So these career paths of, 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 of Virgil van Dijk or even Matthijs de Ligt, who is very young still, yeah. they, they already have career paths that are already 10 years or more. True, true, true. Interesting. I'm th- I'm go- In my head, I'm going through all the players <laughs> now. <because> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is there any, um, any last advice or anything that we missed, Robert? I have no idea what we missed. Well, uh, that it, this is a, this is a very big talent talent development and talent recruitment is is an extremely big um, area where a lot of uh, things play a big or a less big role. Um, in the end, I think it starts with the ownership of the athlete yeah. of. Some something internal, internal motivation, a flame burning somewhere. I really want this. Um, and then it comes to the environment where you can uh, develop yourself to 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 create this enormous passion and energy that you need to be a top performer. Um, I understand that I, I don't have the the, 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 the holy grail the holy gig. grail no, at all no. I don't have the holy grail at all we are still working on it <laughs> sure everybody's trying to find it <laughs> and we're trying to get better every day um, but it, it for me this is an extremely interesting area of in this case sports and yeah. top sports where, where I'm in I am enjoying it day by day um, and, and until the moment that I die uh, I hope that that will take a while uh, we will never get the answer probably on this is what it should be and this is what it has to be. Yeah, I agree. I think once we think we have an answer on a certain aspect, the game or the sports the is game evolved. Is <laughs> yeah, or the, it, it's, it's already evolved miles ahead again and we're, yeah, we're constantly yeah. there. But you see, on a, on, a, on a monthly base, there are new sure. researches. There are new possibilities to measure things. There are new insights. There are new... And um, that makes it so extremely interesting for me. Yeah, well, for me as well. And that's why I get to talk to people like you. Okay, how does uh, the agenda look in the upcoming weeks or months? Um, we are going to do a lot of interviews in the coming week with pro- probably new prospects and new riders. Yeah. Um, we are going to test them. We take them on training camps. Uh, this is to recruit them for the development yes, team, this right? Is to recruit them for <coughs> the development uh, we don't have a lot of spots. We work b- between 14 and 16 riders in yeah. the age group of 18 to 23. So, uh, and when are they, uh, just a little side step, when are they hired? Because f- for my feeling, you're kind of halfway the season of, of cycling. No, no, this is already the preparation for 2023 <coughs> and okay. 2024. Okay, so you're d- recruiting for the contracts for 23? 24, 25. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, so yeah. for the, l- the longer uh, <coughs> uh, term. Um, and this is a constant process because in, in cycling you also have below this under 23 age group, you have juniors, and there's an age group below the juniors 
so we starting we starting our project already in di- this age group so yeah. to slowly get them into a certain way of structurized training awareness personal development yeah so you're preparing them yeah. for top sports yeah we're preparing them for to make this step into our team yeah. and our team let's say we are training about 25 hours a week that's that's average yeah sure that's what we try to reach in in a couple of years to be ready to make the step, hopefully to the world tour. Okay. And, and, uh, we are we are at this moment. This this um, pathway is is, is is getting better and better and better. And you can see this also <coughs> in our squads. So uh, yeah, that's that's what we are doing at the moment. Kay. In between, with the squad that we have now, we are doing a lot of races. Sure. Uh, and also training games, like I said. Uh, next week is the nationals, time trialing the nationals, road racing. After that, we go to altitude camp with some riders, or to another camp, uh, training two weeks in Slovenia, and after that, a series of racing starts again. And in between this, we try to fit in new riders who will start racing for us uh, in the next season. Okay, and then my my idea of your role is then. During the altitude week, you are more into okay. How do they develop themselves to train properly? Then during the the races, you are de- helping them develop. How do you approach your races? And how how can we win the races as a team? And then the week after, you are talking to to a new cyclist or whatever, yeah. and you're more in the recruitment side. So it's constantly moving between all yeah, those factors. Yeah, yeah. Completely right. So the question is, with the in the recruitment side, do these kids have the potential to reach these high levels? Do they fit in a team? Yeah. Do they have the character? Is the book on the table then? Yeah. Yeah. Do they fit in the team? <laughs> um and and yes, from that perspective, everybody has his individual goals. We have our big goals with the team. And we try to connect these. Cool. So that's that's the that's the basic things that we do. Okay, it sounds very interesting. On a daily basis. Sounds very interesting. It looks like you have a amazing job, crazy schedule. And uh, uh, once again, I really appreciate that you took the time to uh, to sit down with me and that we hopefully inspired uh, mainly football coaches with a cycling story. Uh, not a story, a cycling context. Uh, Robert, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Uh, very interesting and uh, hope to talk to you soon. Well, uh, let's, uh, le- I, I think it would be a good idea to to maybe take one small point and maybe mm. go into depth a little bit more because there's so much more knowledge inside of you, I think. But that's for the long term. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay.